Well, welcome everyone to tonight's inaugural lecture by Professor Abdul Hamid Suleiman, Professor of Signal Processing and Telecommunications at Staffordshire University. For those I haven't met yet, I am Kevin Hetherington, Deputy Vice Chancellor, and I would like to welcome you to tonight's lecture. An inaugural lecture is an important event in the career of any academic. It is only offered to those when they attain a professorship and gives them an opportunity to share their research with a public audience that reaches beyond their own colleagues and peers. To give such a lecture is a mark of achievement and distinction for those who have attained the highest academic status within their chosen field. To present such a lecture provides a professor with an opportunity to share their contribution to knowledge creation and to communicate that not only to those here today in the room. In the past, that lecture would also have been published in written form and made available subsequently in that way. Today, we're able to disseminate more widely and we'll be recording this evening's lecture and it will be made public on YouTube so that many who are unable to be here tonight can see it now or in the future. Inaugural lectures are also important for us at Staffordshire University as the hosting institution. We are able to show with pride our academic achievers and the importance in which their research is held. The work we're going to hear about tonight is a mark of academic excellence at the cutting edge of new science and new thinking within, with new applications within societies and across the world. This is something we seek to champion at this university. So let me now tell you something about Professor Abdul Hamid Solomon. He has worked as an academic for over 30 years in Egypt, UK, USA and China. His research focuses on signal processing, telecommunications and smart systems. Through this, he is particularly interested in linking new research to real life applications in order to tackle everyday challenges. He was awarded his PhD from Staffordshire University in 2007. His thesis looked at content-based image retrieval and feature extraction. After completing this, he joined Staffordshire as a lecturer in 2010. Since then, he has worked hard in his research, producing over 60 peer-reviewed papers. Like most academics, he works on his research in collaboration with others. His research was carried out with partners both here at Staffordshire and at Sheffield and also internationally with academic colleagues in Jordan and numerous places beyond that. Like all good professors, he is also an educator and has sought to bring on the careers of many other academics. In this respect, he has supervised 16 PhD students and has helped them attain that award for their research. His main areas of research interest are in artificial intelligence and deep learning with very broad application and knowledge transfer in many areas. He is interested in how these can be applied to find solutions within day-to-day -day living such as, for example, in improvements in olive growing in Jordan, in 3D breast tumour diagnosis, smart monitoring of diabetic control systems, work on the Internet of Things and location identification and around water supply. As we can see, his understanding of these smart systems has wide application and this is particularly impressive, an aspect of his work. He has received recognition for this work through several awards, including the Lord Stafford Award Impact Through Innovation for designing and developing a smart monitoring and controlling system for diabetic people. He also received the AWM ICT Excellence Award for Best Knowledge Transfer Project in the category for designing and developing an electronic bladder diary and also a UN, UHNS Clinical Innovation Award for designing and developing an online multimedia-based training system for surgeons. He also holds an honorary professorship, a great mark of esteem, from XUPT China. As well as his own research, Professor Solomon is an editor or associate edi editor of four academic journals. So it gives me great pleasure this evening to introduce Professor Abdul Hamid Solomon. After he presents his lecture, there will be an opportunity for members of the audience to ask him questions, and I will facilitate that discussion. His lecture is entitled Smart and Intelligent Systems, Design, Application and Challenges. 
Over to you, Professor Solomon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kevin. Welcome all. I think Kevin mentioned everything. I have nothing to do to say more than this. More than this. Today, I will use this opportunity to take you through our, my journey. Maybe it is academic journey, but you will find some personal bits and pieces in, in this uh, presentation. My journey started from long time, as you can see from photos here. Uh, not very long, long, just a long time. Uh, I gained many things. I gained experience, I gained friends, I gained uh, amazing colleagues. But also I lost some stuff, like my hair, for example. I lost it during this <laughs> session, this journey. I want to use this opportunity to thank my family, my bigger family, parents, my parents, because first one directed me to, uh, to uh, engineering field was my father. He is carrying me here. So he noticed me while I'm playing with toys and selecting the toys and so on. He was observing and watching me and he noticed that always I try to select toys with the screws and the stuff I can dismantle and re reassemble again. And they started to help me to, toward this direction. When he was dropping me in, in, uh, to school or collecting me from a school in his beetle, red beetle, he was always, I was always, always asking him about many things in the car, why this is working, why all people putting water in their car and not our car, why engine here is back and all engines in front. So I was asking about everything in the car and I wanted to understand how it is working. Then I started to spread and expand and try, I was trying to fix stuff at home. Any appliances, any problem, I feel very happy when I fix something, but I will not deny that I destroyed many things as well. <laughs> From the academic side, I started to build these skills by joining a university in Egypt, Arab Academy for Science and Technology. I joined uh, College of Engineering. Uh, my major was electronics and the telecommunications. Uh, really, I enjoyed uh, work, uh, studying in the university in Arab Academy for Science and Technology because their style, it was a little bit different than the common style at this time. There is no theaters and so on, just the small classes, each class, 20 students max maximum, full, full access for labs and so on. Then really, I enjoyed this time. Uh, it was about five years, because bachelor degree in Egypt, five years. This is a university in Alexandria, but they have different branches everywhere. After graduation, I joined Alexandria University, an institute of graduate studies and, and research. And I did my research in information technology. I built a data acquisition system to acquire information from ship engine room to monitor ev everything, every bit inside the engine room in one screen. And I want to thank the Arab Academy for Science and Technology because they give me the access to their uh, ship IDA4 uh, to use it as a case study to build some prototypes in uh, the system, in their, in their ship. After that, I joined Staffordshire University to start my PhD in the area of content-based image retrieval. It was a hard time for me, not because of research, I enjoyed the research, but during this time, I suffered from a stroke and I left, I my left side of my body was paralyzed. Uh, I was not able to speak, but Sankas got recovered and I'm mentioning that to really to thank my smaller family, my wife and the kids who supported me a lot during this time. 
and there is, you have, really they have a very big role in that. In, in addition to my friends in the research area, university staff and my supervisors. After, not after, in parallel, in parallel I was thinking about engineering really for, for, for one of the reasons. I noticed the whole world invent, investing a lot in weapons, in war, in killing each other. And we have already a huge amount of enemies. We have enemies in many fields. We have natural disasters. We have earthquakes, floods, virus, uh, uh, flood, uh, so water. Water in some places, people dying because there is no water. And some other places, people dying due to floods and extra water. And I felt the engineering can contribute in, solve, in providing some solutions to these problems. If you go anywhere, you will notice engineering is there. If you go to hospital in theater or operation room, you'll find a lot of equipments are equipment around you. If you are going for industry, you will find everything is automated now. Uh, transportation, uh, safety, security. And by the way, um, when I mention engineering, really, I mention the word, I mention the word engineering because this is my area. But you can, apply, you can apply it for computing, for science, or for many other areas, for psychology. You will find also their fingerprint everywhere. But um, I selected engineering, I felt that it matches my skills. I started my research to focus on my research in two main areas, uh, telecommunications and signal processing. And we can consider image and the video processing a part of the signal processing. I have uh, a lot of research in the area. If we are talking about wireless uh, communication, Internet of Things, and the wireless sensor network, research in wired communication and fiber optics with our Chinese partner. Uh, we have uh, signal processing. For example, currently uh, there is a BHD project in the area of brain computer interface. Image and the video processing, huge number of research, not huge, big number of research, starting from my PhD, now, for example, breast cancer detection, and so on, driver fatigue, and so on. Today, I, I will not focus a lot or I will not focus deeply in my research because I know backgrounds of audience will be from uh, different, uh, all audience, ha they are coming from different backgrounds. Then I selected subject, the smart and intelligent systems. Each one while he, he is watching the session today, he can apply uh, what I am presenting to his area. Smart and intelligent systems, systems we know what is system, but smart and intelligent, it is really debatable word. If I'm saying this system, what I consider smart, maybe you will not. Then it is a little bit debatable word for that reason, I will adopt this definition in my presentation, that intelligence, it is what we are born with. We are born with fixed amount of intelligence. Is this the end? No, we have the smart side. The smart side is an earned status. I, I, I increase my smartness by education, learning, uh, exper acquiring experience, and so on. Then we will adopt these two definitions during our presentation when we talk about the smart system and the intelligent system. Yes, we have intelligent system, very intelligent, and they have intelligent system can learn and adapt with our needs. This is what we call it smart. But sure, you can judge the system is smart or not based on the decision. Then based on the system decision, you can say this system behave with a smart way or not. To be able to behave or to, to give you a smart decision, I need to acquire the, the required information first. I want to adjust this, the temperature room. Shall I raise temperature or push it down? I need first to, to acquire some knowledge. What is the temperature now inside the room? Then it is 15 years. I need to raise the temperature, to increase the temperature. 
Also, not only temperature, and I need to know if some people in the room or not, if there is no one in the people, why I spend the money to warm up the room? There is no need. Then I will need to acquire the right information, the required information to be able to take the decisions. And first step, we'll use sensors to acquire information about our application. I'm using temperature as an example only, but we'll see practical examples later. Then I will start to process it to see the temperature in the range or not. If the temperature will be in the range or not. If it is not in the range, I will try to take action. To take action, really the processing unit does not take action, but they have the decision and then it will be sent to actuators to take the decision to switch on air conditioner or to switch off air conditioner, for example. These are the three main parts. You will find them everywhere. Acquiring data, process, take action. These are the main parts of systems or smart systems. There are three main, there are, there are three hidden parts. Normally, we don't consider them, we don't see them, but they are really very important. They are the same like these three parts. First, one communication, and the communication responsible about transporting and moving information between different parts of the system. Power, power is very important. In some project, the main challenge is power. Like one of my students who is doing his research and he completed his PhD about manhole cover monitoring. Then we are putting this node in each manhole cover will detect if there is corrosion, if there are cracking, if, it is, if the manhole cover tilted and so on, and we'll acquire all of this information in central place, in server, and then we can notice, we, can, we will not wait until the problem happens, we will fix it before it happens. To do this, I need source of power. Most of manhole covers, they are not close to source of power. Then power itself, it is, it is a, an important point, and we have good research team in this area, this is not my research area but I need to, un to understand the whole image. Now we will come to the maestro. The maestro of our system is the software. Software will be responsible about managing all of this stuff. When we talk about artificial intelligence, about deep learning, about all of these technologies, really we are talking about software. Software doing all of that. Then let us go through these points one by one, but just to let you know, I am, I am not doing research in all of these areas, uh, king of all, king of nothing. I'm focusing in communication and the data processing, but to provide solutions for industry, for community, I need to be aware about other technologies around my research area. When we started to think about designing a smart system, we did not start from scratch. We started to look to ourselves and to copy our body to build a smart system. Then really we started to look to, to ourselves. And we tried to simulate and emulate human body. Maybe not the shape. I'm not talking about robot you see in TV moving like that and so on. No, computer. If you follow the computer process, any computer, it is emulating and simulating a human body. First step, do we have sensors in our body? Yes, we have a huge amount of sensors. We have eyes, working as camera, nose, working like gas sensor, ears, working like microphones. We have tongue that can work like sensor to acquire information, or tongue, or tongue working now actuators. I'm talking, I'm trying to deliver a message. Then tongue can play both roles. The scans have a huge amount of sensors. Just with one touch like that, I tell you the temperature of the surface. The surface, this surface is smooth or rough. I can describe the shape of the surface with my scan only, just touch. Then we have this in our body. We want to implement it also in our system. We need to acquire the required information. We need to to manage energy in this building, I need to put sensors for temperature, I need to put sensors for lighting, for devices, of no one in the room, I need to switch lights and so on, then I need to acquire all of this 
information. I can use temperature sensors, the pressure sensors, flow, flow, water flow, liquid flow, or air flow, and so on. A huge amount of sensors. And this is big research area itself. To select the suitable sensor, we have several classifications. We can think about power requirements, about uh, physical uh, FZR, uh, FZR contactless or contact sensors, like uh, sensing principle, temperature will change a resistor, or temperature will change a capacitance, and so on. There are many, many parameters we can classify sensors based on them. After that, we have characteristics of these sensors. We need to think about them. We need to think about the accuracy, precision, sensitivity, and so on. If, I'm, if you are going back to the same example about temperature sensor, if I'm selecting a sensor to tell me temperature now in the room is 20 degrees, I can pay 100 pounds extra to, to, to have high, high accuracy sensor to tell me temperature is 2.001. It is not useful for me. I added cost and money to my system. I will not, I, I, I will not notice the difference between 20 and the 20.001. But maybe in chemical reaction, this small change can make difference. A difference, OK? So it is very important to selecting a sensor, determining specifications, and so on. Now sensor will produce the signal to go to the processor or to be processed and analyzed. Unfortunately, the output from sensor not suitable for that. We need to go through data acquisition system. Normally, signal is weak. We need to amplify it. Signal carry, carries a lot of noise. We need to remove this noise by filtering. Signal needs some processing. It is not linear. I need to fix this point. And at the end, the majority of sensors are producing analog signal and the majority of processing machines working in digital format. We need translator in the model. In the middle is analog and the digital converter. Then it will go to the roll. As we said, I will put my hand here and I will tell you this surface is called Y because signal sent from skin sent from skin to brain and the brain started to analyze and to, to, get, to, to extract this information. The same here, signal after acquiring the signal, I need to send them to processing unit, to the brain of my system. Brain of my system, like human being exactly, signals go through nerves, different nerves to brain to be processed. The same in our system, this data will go through data bus, through to the central processing unit to be processed, and then the feedback or the decision will go. I will use also data bus again to send it back to control the system body or the system actions. We are a little bit lucky. Our brain is similar to each other most of the time, but in our systems, we have different categories also of sensors. We have general processors, we have Sig digital signal processors, FEBGA, embedded processors. Each processor has its features and its advantage and disadvantage. Uh, for example, for our computers, we are using a general purpose processors like Intel processors, like uh, M1 from Apple processors. We are using these processors because I can use computer to read email, someone use it to play games, someone to browse internet, someone to control production line. Then we need processor with a lot of facilities. At the end, I'm using, if you check your processor on computer, you'll find you are using 20% of its power only. But this is suitable for the nature of the application. I, I will not be able to tailor computer for each person. But if I want to tailor something, like for example, I want to control washing machine, I, I want to control uh, microwave, I will not use general purpose processor. I will not buy processor for 500 pounds or 400 pounds to control microwave for 80 pounds. Then we go to embedded processors or microcontroller. They are dedicated, they have dedicated functions. I can use them and they are very cheap. Also we have, after selecting the right processor, we need to check uh, the processing power the required processing power. For example, when I go to buy, to buy computer, 
I ask for processor Intel i3, i5, i7, i9. These different categories inside the main category, general purpose processor. Then I need to know number of bits, number of cores, memory internal, external, how much memory this processor can manage. I need to know all of this stuff. Unfortunately, when we go to buy a computer, we just go to any shop and saying, I want a computer 2 gigahertz, Pentium 2 gigahertz. It is exactly if I'm going to buy a car and saying, I want a car 2000 CC. Could be Ferrari, could be Fiat. I need to, to give more details. And this is what we are trying to teach our students here. We are telling them, if you studied engineering course and when you go to buy computer, you, you search for someone to help you to put the specification, we will be failed in this case. I want you to everything you study here to apply it in real life, in your personal life. Then last step, action. Now we want the action. Do we have actuators in human body? Yes, as we said, mouse is, uh, is actuator muscles, actuators. Then in, in, the, in the sports, for example, this example in the sports, the player will watch, observe the ball, acquiring the data through his eyes. Processing the data, determining his position, and the based on his position, you will find big amount of orders going from brain to muscles, the joints, some of them will expand, some of them will relax, some of them will uh, will push him in different sides and so on until he reaches a point. Can you imagine how many muscles will, will it change, will move, will I need to change their condition to catch a ball? The same, when you ask me a question, I start, I will listen, I will think about it, then I will use lips and mouth as an actuator to start to talk about them. I am not even using the mouse and the lips only. I, all of the time I'm using my hand, my arm, there is body communication as well. Sometimes I, don't, I will not use my mouse and my, and my tongue. I just look to someone, he knows the answer after that. My wife does this with me a lot. So, uh, <laughs> the same here in our applications, we have our muscles. Yes, we have mouse and the tongue speakers, or mouse and the tongue. We have our muscles, they are actuators. We, they are, for example, electric, electrical actuators, DC motor, AC motor, uh, stepper motors, the solenoids, and the hydraulic and pneumatic actuators. We have huge amount of actuators. Each type can be used based on the application need. We will start now talking about the hidden three components. Communication. Many people they consider this era is era of computer or era of artificial intelligence. Personally, this is my personal opinion. This is the era of telecommunication or era of communication. If you are going to switch on your computer now and you, you, you did not find the internet, I am sure you will not stay on it. You will switch it off and you will, you will not continue on your computer. We have in our body very good wired communication system, our nerve, transporting data everywhere in our body, linking our body organs together. Also, we have wireless communication. What I'm doing now is wireless communication. I'm converting my thoughts to acoustic waves to go to you, it is wireless communication. The same in our field, we have wired and wireless communication, and each type will suit different application. Always I ask my students, which is better, wireless or wired communication? Unfortunately, most of them saying wireless communication. Then my answer always, maybe you are right, maybe wrong, but sure, my question, it was wrong. I need to tell you the application. Without application, I will not be able to determine which type it will be suitable. I cannot use wired communication with mobile phone. But in project, for example, with one of oil companies, we wanted to, make, to build a communication system in their premises, but their premises, they have very heavy electromagnetic field. And at the same time, it is attic area, it is uh, explosive area, gases everywhere. 
If I'm using a wired cable can generate arcs and sparks, wireless signals will be killed because wireless signals in air. It will be destroyed. Then the solution, it was to go to fiber optic communications uh, mean. The advantage of fiber optics, they are insulator. If they, are, they will not generate any sparks or arcs. Yes, fiber optics, fastest, fastest communication way or communication channel in the air settle now. Because we are sending data with light speed. But I did not use it for this advantage. I used it for safety only. Just for safety, because you will not generate any problem. I can have in each block of these blocks uh, full session. <laughs> so this is just a quick idea about them, even coverage the range. For example, if I'm talking about wireless communication, if I want a small communication like between the uh, remote control and the TV, infrared is enough for me. I want a longer distance, like between a smart, smart watch and my mobile phone. I will go to for, for Bluetooth. Longer, I will go for Wi-Fi and so on. And normally in our system, we don't use sing, single communication channel. We use several communication channels. Like if I'm going to the same example, a smart watch will send, a smart watch will send data. There are some sensors in a smart watch to acquire data about our body, send it to the mobile phone, Bluetooth, then from the mobile phone, it will be sent to internet through the Wi-Fi, through access point. Then I'm using the Wi-Fi wireless communication. Then from the Wi-Fi till the switch in, in, in outside the building, it will be metal cables. After that, it will be fiber optics. After that, maybe it will go to satellite communication. I used all of these communications and just maybe while I'm delivering one lecture for students. Second part, power, and the power for us is what? <laughs> food. Is the food. Is this is the food for the system. Then power is very important area. And as I told you, some projects that challenge mainly with power, not, uh, not about other parts. Sometimes it is about power. But as we, when we go to select our food, we're trying to select the fresh food, the uh, organic food, also, I don't like to think about source of power mains or batteries rechargeable or single use. No, I want to dive a little bit a step deeper to think, it, is it coming from renewable energy or not? If I am moving it to electrical cars and still to charge my car, I need to burn oil to generate electricity to charge the car. Yes, the effect, the side effects went outside the city, but still inside the whole plant. So, really, I liked this quote for Ahmed Zaki Yamani saying the Stone Age did not end because run out of scone, stones, and the age of oil won't end because run out of oil. Oil age should end because we should find the better way, better way for generating energy. Software. As we said, the maestro, and responsible about every part. I will stop before I talk about software here a few seconds, just because this last time for this screen to appear. Now we have about six components in our smart systems. Really, we cannot say there is an important component and not important component. All of them, they are very important. I cannot ignore any one of them. If I don't have power, I will have dead body in front of me. If I don't have software, I will have nice equipment flashing, but nothing on them, like I'm not able to manage them. There is no processing unit. There is no data acquisition. There is no action. No, I need all parts to work, to work together. For that reason, the era of one man show, I think we should end now. I cannot work alone. I cannot, be in, I cannot be innovative while I'm working in lab alone. I need to collaborate with colleagues. For example, I have a lot of common research with my colleagues in computing now, currently, and some of the research already finished. We need to collaborate with all areas, especially area like engineering. It is very hard to work for myself. I need to work to serve our area, like medical area, like uh, energy, like transportation, and so on. 
Software, it is the interface between computer and user. I cannot deal with hardware directly. I am using the software. There are two types of software applications, application software and the system software. We don't manipulate a lot uh, the system software, like Android or Windows or uh, Apple operating system. We, we are using them. We play more with the applications and with the tailored software. Uh, general purpose software like Microsoft Word and the PowerPoint, but when we build a system, we need to build a program as well. And I will give you a simple example. I will not talk about AI, artificial intelligence, about this stuff. Just a very simple example. Many programs and many systems failed just because bad user interface. User is not, it was hard for him to deal with the interface. It is just a user interface. We believe this is a small part, but it is very important. Now, we'll take some relaxation with this nice video. <laughs> Break for a few seconds with this nice video. And you can see the bird standing in water. The bird legs are acquiring information about water speed. His eyes working like camera trying to find the food, trying to catch a fish. Acquiring this information, when finds the fish, will go to hunt directly. No, there are also some errors that you, refraction errors. Brain will fix, fish is here, no, it is there. I see it here, but it is there. Then the brain of the bird will fix this error and will catch the fish from its place. Maybe bird born like that or maybe by experience after but trials several times started to build this experience. Then this a full smart system or a full system as you can see. I will show you also another system, but this system we are working on it now, a smart olive harvesting system, and it is funded from Royal Academy of Engineering. And as we said, we cannot work alone, working with many partners, working with AMRC, Sheffield from the UK and from Jordan, Ministry of Agriculture and uh, Mota University, Tafila University. Our team, each one has different skills, different area can cover, but we, with all of the harvesting, I think food is very important to issue now. Population increasing around the world and we have the same resources. We cannot rely to all the techniques. For olives, we have many challenges. For example, what you see now as background is not background for my screen, this farm. This farm for olives farm. Thousands of trees. Tree size, big, big size. Then this very, I cannot rely on manual uh, harvesting in farm like that. Nature of the land itself. Most or many of all of the farm, farms in mountains, not in flat ground. Most of them in mountains. Even automation hard, which robot I can use it in this case. Uh, all of these themselves as fruits, they are very small. They can include each other, they can be included by leaves, they can be included by branches. Uh, they have different colors. Black, green, and in between. The, and some of them, they have multiple colors in the same fruit. So really, it is very challenging. And the more challenging when I tell you, we are working in open area. We are not working in a studio with green background. We have the right lights and so on. No, my, I'm working now where light can come from this side or from that side, or maybe cloudy today. Then we proposed this system based on the sex components. This was our proposal. Sensing, acquiring information about the olives, the fruits in the, in, on the tree. Then we process this image, send it to processing unit to use AI technique, deep learning, to try to classify olives. And this part is our area of work. All the project, not in the first part or second part, in the middle. We are working in this part, how to, ex how to increase the success rate of detecting uh, the olives. After detecting the olives, we start. We have the, we have the information in our hand now. We can start to say, yes, is it mature enough to, to be harvested or not? 
can I can calculate what is the expected production for my farm? I have a lot of information. Then, if it is ready to be harvested, I will give order to robots. Robots will go to do this process. Uh, our proposal really they are not separate. It is the same robot carry camera and carry arms for harvesting. It is one, one unit. And now we started uh, uh, to collaborate with other, investigate the collaboration with other institutes in uh, UK, in Spain, in Saudi Arabia, uh, in uh, Tunisia to expand more. Saudi Arabia interested about tree hills. Okay, if you acquire this information, why we cannot evaluate the tree hills as well? We have, the, we have the database, we have the image. We can evaluate the tree hills. Because losing all of the tree is hard because all of the tree, they have long, long life. Oldest one, 5,000 years now in Crete, an island, Crete island in Mediterranean Sea. Uh, why don't they investigate disease? Then if you have the image, why don't you try to investigate disease in leaves and so on? Okay, all of this about image processing. There are some insects going inside the tree trunk. Then we start to use wireless signal and they take the signature to see if there are some uh, insects going inside the trunk or not. We can apply this to any area. Now think about your area and apply it there. It is the same concept. Monitoring, I can monitor roads, smart cities applications. I can monitoring health. We had project to put sensors in human body in, uh, in, in intensive care to acquire information about his case. And then if there is any distress or any problem, I can send a message directly to his doctor to come to see what is wrong with him and so on. And by the way, it was final year project. It was not master project. It was final year project. Uh, smart compass, fleet monitoring, we have many, many applications. Over the last t 10 years, I was involved in about 20 projects, externally funded projects, in addition to about 16 PhD completion working, completions working in these areas. Currently, I have research in the area of 3D breast tumor diagnosis based on AI and deep learning. First publication has been sent. We are waiting now for the result. <laughs> Brain disorder diagnosis, and this very important area now, especially with Elon Musk when he said we need to, in, to, in, to implant a device in our brains. Then we, we don't need to wait all of this time to listen to me. Just I can transfer the lecture to your head wirelessly. There is no need to talk at all. <laughs> But also we need to consider hacking, guys, because if we have it, we, we, we are, maybe we are exposed for hacking as well. Completed PHD Wi-Fi based people localization, uh, bladder, bladder monitoring system, and this project has got uh, one uh, award from NHS. And the last project, I mentioned the last project because I like this type of projects because till now we are talking about research. And now I want to link it to our second half, our, the core of our work, bread and the butter, the teaching and the learning activities. Last project, it is about monitoring gases inside industrial places and the workshops. Uh, mainly about monitoring airflow inside air conditioning ducts and so on. Uh, ducts are not like American movies, clean, nice people going through them. Ducts are really, if you put your hand, you will come back with many, a lot of dust. Putting the sensors in them, sensors in them, maybe few, few hours, you will find them covered with dust. Then we are trying to work in ultrasonic sensor with master student, and this is, I wanted to, to talk about that because our colleagues involved in similar projects with Sambit, Samyak, and so on. Then we are preparing our students to join the market, the job market running. We, I don't like to teach student, all, students all of the time something, and once they graduate, they find a different world. No, while they are doing their work here, I'm linking them to industry. I, I was very upset when I attended induction week in one of the factories, and I found the supervisor there 
saying to the new attendee, you I want you to forget everything you studied in school and the university and to start with me now. What? 15 years, 13 years, just threw them, threw them away and started to build again? No, we want to use these 13 years really to prepare our students to join the market. And this, I believe, we are doing this now in Staffordshire University. And this is just an example. Now, students be providing the solutions, or at least acquiring the experience of providing solutions for industry. They study the problems, they study the possible solutions, and so on. Also, another example of that will not be able to work as an individual anymore, maybe in research in a specific point, as we are talking research as a research point, maybe in a specific point we can talk about, we can uh, uh, talk about or do research in certain point, but to make, to have productive solution, I need to collaborate with others, to integrate this, all of this stuff together. I will talk about a robot called Da Vinci. Da Vinci robot, it is a very nice robot, allowing, surgeon, doctor, to operate without touching the patient completely. I am not sure if, if uh, no, it will not appear. As you can see here, we have four arms, robot with four arms. These four arms, one of them, there is camera and the light, and the other tools in other arms. Then I will open four, hole, four holes in the human body. The patient is here. I will insert the four arms in her body. Then doctor sitting in device there, like joystick, like playing a game, going inside the body, making the operation. Patient should stay two, two weeks recovery, no, 24 hours will go out. There is no major injuries. We'll make the operation, we'll finish the operation, everything done, more, more accurate than using the hand and the hand's mistakes. Patient in left hand side, doctor in right hand side, could be in different rooms. No, I will surprise you. Last year or the year before, doctor was in London and the patient was in USA. Then we made the operation. Doctor was here and the patient in the USA. Uh, okay, who can produce this solution? Me? Telecommunication? No. Telecommunication is very important. If I don't have tele, strong telecommunication uh, infrastructure, I will not be able to, to operate on someone in USA. But it needs people from robotics background, the mechatronics, programming, uh, so, uh, what's it? Medi me medical side, the main side, medical side, mechanical, electronics, all, all areas. We cannot, we cannot produce really good solution like that uh, without collaboration. Uh, I will surprise you more. This is not new. This is introduced to the market to near 2000. Now we are in fourth generation of this equipment of Da Vinci. We are in fifth generation. Then for that reason, I'm saying we are living in highly dynamic world. Technology is changing every day. I, am, I don't like to close my session before two, two minutes only about education and share two slides with you because I believe they are very important slides. First slide by David Warlick saying, we must prepare students for a future we can neither describe nor predict. We are preparing our students to start to work in jobs they are not there. I don't, I don't know what is it. Okay, we will teach them more artificial intelligence. AI, then you will be equipped. After graduation, sorry, it is obsolete. obsolete. Now we are in NI. What is NI? Natural intelligence, a new area. But this is in the pen and the jump with me. When I graduated 1989, long, long time. I did not like to mention this year. You will, you will, you will predict my age. <laughs> So 1989, I graduated, I started to work as a programmer. I was very good in Fortran. They told me, no, Fortran, you need to learn Pascal. I learned Pascal. I am good in Pascal. Oh, there is Turbo Pascal. 
موف تو تربو باسكال اوكي تربو باسكال نو 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 ماي سوبرفايزر ماستر سي يو نيد تو وركو سي اي ستارت تو سي سي بلس بلس بورتلاند سي سي هاش جافا اي تولد نو 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 I will not. I will not work in this field. I am not interested in programming. I jump into microprocessors, the computer architecture. It changed at this time in hardware. It was more slowly than software. Next slide will clarify this slide more. From Richard Raleigh, Raleigh, we are currently preparing students for jobs do not yet exist, and this is in reality. Search on internet, jobs will disappear next ten years. We are preparing the student to work, students to work for 40 years at least. Then some jobs will disappear. Technology is not invented yet. Then I cannot teach them the technology. I cannot teach them the technology. We do not know even the problems. If I'm talking about cyber security and the transferring money by one click in computer, transferring 100,000 pounds, I, was, I, I, I stayed for about three years uh, uh, trying to avoid and to use the credit card or, or debit card. I wanted to pay money with my hand to see the money and the take receipt and I didn't. Can you, how can I teach someone like that? Then the concept of consider the student brain a container to transfer knowledge to it, to fill it with knowledge, go to exam, put everything from the, his head or her head in the paper and go, going outside the exam hall. Okay, what is cosine theta? Sorry, I answered everything. All data there in the paper. I'm not interested to say anything after that. We need to focus on skills, student skills, learning skills. The real learning will start after graduation, not during the, 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 the university time or school time. The real learning will be there, but we need to prepare them to focus on their learning skills, communication skills, teamwork skills, Learning should be as we need to adopt more education for principles, like education everywhere, every, any time, with any tool. I'm teaching a module with Alabama University, students in Qatar, South Africa, USA, UK. While I'm teaching in, in Qatar dinner time, in uh, South Africa the same time, in lunch time in USA, students are telling me we leave our work and during lunch time, we go to our cars in the car park, some of them using the phone to attend the lecture, some of them using uh, tablet, some of them using uh, computer. We need to facilitate all of this stuff for our students. And I am not saying this is future for this reason. Sorry, I put future here, if you see in this slide, between quotations, because what, this is what we are already doing here in our university. We are trying to link our students really to real, real life experience. At the end, I want, when we achieve our target or we achieve some success, we feel that we, we did this by ourselves. But while I was preparing this presentation, I went back, I found no. There are many people contributed to this journey, to this journey. Starting from my parents, my teachers in the schools, my teachers in university, supervisors, uh, my, my smaller family, and thank you very much for all of the, your efforts. I'm saying my father and my mom, I born, they are the reason to be me here. But second born, when I met my wife, she is always supporting. And this achievement, it's family achievement, not one person achievement. And thank you very much. Thank you very much for a fascinating talk and thank you also for making it sort of easy to understand for people who are not experts in this field. I found that a very, very stimulating talk. So let me open it up. We've got a little bit of time for some questions if anyone has any questions. So um, your thoughts, please, colleagues. They are experts in the area, they will not ask. They're all experts in the area, so they... Well, let me ask a question first, while they're all thinking of their question. And that is, when, when will we lose the, the term smart? At the moment, the term smart tends to be used because there are obviously systems that aren't smart, yeah. and, and this is something novel and new and different. 
But how, when will it become ubiquitous? When, when will it become such a normal thing that we no longer refer to it as? We have already some smart systems available now. It is not something yeah. in future. Yeah. But we need more applications. For example, first the software I buy it for voice recognition. Instead of typing two, three pages, you can read them and the Zen computer will recognize your voice and the convert them to text. When I put this software, I remember it was from IBM in about 1999, 1998, something like that, in this period. When I started to, to read, while I'm starting to read, the recognition was very bad. Then, for example, in first page, recognition was about 50%. Second division started to be better. Started, then system started to learn. There is accent, there is stuff. It started to learn this stuff while I'm correcting my mistakes. The mistakes started to learn. Then we need these systems, systems to learn, to be, to be adaptable. Our system monitoring, sorry, monitoring and tracking your attitudes in computer and putting the adverts for you, learning from your acquiring information about you and your interest and trying to provide you with what you want. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Yes, one here. I've uh, got yes, several others. Uh, let me ask you, thank, yeah. uh, thank you very much for the really inspiring um, presentation. Uh, my question is uh, about the uh, smartness and the building of those smart machines, i.e. the um, uh, the, the robots which can do a lot more than we can as a human being, when will we be uh, so worried about becoming so inferior to those uh, machines? I can tell you something we should be so worried now. <laughs> now, if, I will not talk about machines. When I go outside home and I forget my mobile phone, I feel like I, I, I want to naked in the street. My mobile phone. <laughs> I, I, go, I run back to bring my mobile phone. Uh, uh, I think we should not be very worried, really, because at the end, we are using them to help us, to facilitate many things, for, many things for us. I was talking about credit card. I stayed for a long time. I need to go to bank to, be, to pay my cards when I started to, to, to use them. I was really uh, very resistant to move to cards and then very resistant to pay my cards through internet. I stayed for a long time. Then after I, w I started to pay my cards online, I saved a lot of money. Trip to the bank and the finding barking, barking and, and I saved a lot of money. Then really the aim for these machines to help us. The main advantage of machine really, uh, they are not very smart than, uh, smarter than us, but the point, they, are, they don't feel bored. If I asked you to write, it was punishment. Write, I am bad student 20 times in your, uh, in your, in your, in your uh, notes. In computer, if you told the computer, write it one million times, okay. <laughs> it is easy for him. This is the main, main issue between computer and, and us. But now, really, it gives us a lot of facilities, a lot of features. Um, as I told you, we are teaching in China while we are, we are here, teaching USA while we are here. We need to try to focus on the positive side of it. There are a lot of negative stuff, really, but uh, it will come from human, not from machine. The human, human controlling these machines. Let's hope that will be the case. Let's hope. <laughs> I think we've got two more questions, one here, and then I'll come to you next. Thank you very much, Dr. Uh, my question is about uh, net zero achievements based on the Paris Agreement. By 2050, it's expected that uh, we achieve net zero emission majority of the countries. Do you think small buildings and small cities are preconditioned to achieve net zero? Is it possible to achieve that, you know, target of emission without having small cities and small buildings? Net zero. Uh, I, I, I had a project with partners from Nepal and Uzbekistan, in addition to European partners. We are working about natural disasters, how to build a system to deal with natural disaster before, during, and after. Uh, it was Erasmus project. I visited university in Nepal. They have buildings, they call it net zero building. They are claiming 
they are not using, they are completely independent. They are not using any energy from outside the building. They are not connected even to the national grid for the one building only inside the university. So I believe it, it will be done by increasing, uh, by, by, it will be done by you, Torfi, Mohammed, increasing source, researching in renewable energy, better efficiency of solar panels, better efficiency in storage, storage to store energy. Uh, we have many challenges, challenges. People believe that we just put solar panel. I think it's the best one to talk about that. Solar panels, till now, their quality is not very high. I think 25%, something like that, or uh, I'm saying wrong, <laughs> wrong information. <laughs> something like that, around this number. And at the end, we need to store this data. Uh, my role here, uh, data comes, uh, sorry, this energy. Energy comes in DC, I want to save it as DC and convert it to AC to be used and so on. Uh, I think it is, it is possible. I believe, I believe in that. Yeah. Very inspiring. I don't have a question, but just wanted to share two things very much coming out from the last two slides that you have. I repeat to my students every year, every semester change is most static and we never stop learning. Till exactly. The last day of a life. And let's make this not one big conversation, but a learning experience. Mm -hmm. So, very much inspired from your last two slides. Thank you very much because I wanted to say the only fixed stuff in our lives, the only fixed thing is the change. <laughs> this is the fixed stuff in my life, and I forget it. Then. Thank you very much, really. It is very good to highlight this point. And for this reason, we are saying. Uh, you teach students now uh, some stuff in university and after graduation it is not valid anymore. Then we need to teach them how to acquire this information, how to deal with this information. While I was doing my master degree in 1997, internet it was not very common at this time. I was find the, finding a book, for example, in Staffordshire University. I asked someone in England if he can go to Staffordshire University, take photocopy of the book and send it by post, and they lost it in, in post, and it goes again. It was a challenge to find the information. I'm telling my students, you're a challenge more than our challenge. If you find this information, we'll start to work with it. Now, just searching anything, you have 10 million match. Now, you're a challenge how to refine the required, acquired information. Okay, I think, I think that's the end of, of tonight's lecture. Once again, Professor Solomon, thank you very much for a really interesting talk. And if we could have one final round of applause. <laughs>